What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be adding more snail eating predators into my sump. And we actually got the fish right here. Check this out. This is a long bag, right? Look at this. Bam. All right guys, so just like that, we're back at the house. I have fish here. I didn't introduce them earlier, but these two right here are called chain loaches. I was looking for loaches to put in my sump um, that wouldn't get too big, like, like clown loaches and stuff, but the only ones I found that were really good and really fit the description of what I need were these dwarf chain loaches. So I got them for about like $20 each and I got them at Neptune Aquatics over in San Jose. And the good thing about these is they only get about two inches. Like this. Oh, I'm just gonna put it like this. Loaches. And put them right there. Then let's go ahead and put this back. Yeah. All right. Here. Cool. So as you can see, the sump area is a lot brighter. Now, every week, I take out a lot of this uh, water lettuce on, this on the surface, and then um, it pretty much clear it up. So what I have here is I have just a whole bunch of moss, anacris, java fern, anubias. So when the water lettuce outgrows in this tank, I move them up to the goldfish, and then uh, they pretty much chow down on it up here. Actually, I might have some in the trash. Let me go. Let me show you how much I actually throw away. I actually, came back yesterday, and uh, yep, there it is. So I literally threw away all this water lettuce yesterday, and it's still here. Pretty nuts, huh? Like literally all of my tanks have water lettuce chilling in it. I don't know, the water lettuce just grows really good uh, with my bikers. And um, yeah, it filters my tank water and all that stuff. So yeah, I just put them in all my other tanks. It benefits my goldfish the most because these guys actually chow down on it. And um, it provides a, kind of like a vegetable type diet for them. So this guy loves eating anything. And uh, actually good to see that he's doing better. But yeah, they chew on the roots. And then uh, when they die off, I'll throw them away. And then by that time, um, the water that is up here would have already populated the whole top. Look, it's a floating, uh, it's a floating shrimp right there. See it? So this is my my issue. So I have a whole bunch of snails that's in this sump that always survives. They survive, they breed like crazy, and it's becoming a um, bio load issue for my whole system. So as you can see along this whole wall, there's snails up and down. It's becoming bad. I want it to be a lot clearer, so that's why I'm adding in the loaches. I used to have a lot of snails in here too, but I think these geos are killing them off. So that's a good thing. But more on this later, let's go ahead and uh, finish acclimating these guys right here. You know, actually another crazy thing about this tank was uh, before I had ember tetras in here, right? Uh, I got rid of them because I was moving. I didn't want any fish that was in this tank. Uh, I, I, didn't want, I didn't want to feed any fish that's in this little sump area. I just wanted the shrimp and that's it. I get rid of all the ember tetras and I came back to a whole bunch of babies that was in the sump. Came out of nowhere. I had no intentions on breeding them and stuff. They just bred alone. And um, yeah, they made a hell of a lot of babies that was in this tank had to get rid of them again and i think i got rid of all of them as you can see there's nothing really there's no fish in here but yeah man just, just imagine i got rid of ember tetras to find out that they've bred in this tank so if you ever want to breed ember tetras you know just put them in a still water tank uh, put a whole bunch of moss uh, put a whole bunch of plants vegetation and stuff and they'll eventually breed for you apparently it's not that hard to breed ember tetras they look awesome uh, just that I didn't have enough space for them. That's why I had to get rid of them. But this was the ideal situation for me to breed uh, embers in here, I guess. All right, let's go ahead and add these loaches. All right, so you might notice that there's shrimp and snails in here, but honestly, I just want to get rid of the pest snails. If they eat some shrimps, it's okay. Uh, I don't mind, but if they can get rid of all of those pest snails, that'd be great. There's so many snails in here, there's a pest snail on the bag. It's ridiculous. Get out of here. There we go. All right, so before they take off into the vegetation and stuff, I just want to get a little bit of a clip. So um, these two right here are my chain dwarf loaches and stuff. They're gonna help me take care of all these snails. There's a bunch of detritus in here. I gotta clean that up. But yeah, man, that's 
that's, the, that, that's the goal for these two. Hopefully they're not big enough to go across. We're going to see right here. Uh, they roll together in a pack, so that's a good thing. Hopefully, I hope they don't breed because if they breed, I'm going to have a big problem. I, I don't need baby fish in here anymore. Trust me. Let's see if they go across. I don't think there's enough room for them to go across. I literally cut this. I cut this perfectly for a reason. Are they going to go across? No, they can't. That's perfect. Oh, don't get that snail. We're gonna see if they. We're gonna see if they can cross. Oh no, they can't. So they're gonna be here. For, they're gonna be on this side, which is good. A lot of try. Oh, this is the test right here. They can't. Cross, they can't cross, which is good. I don't know why fish like to go on the other side. There's a whole bunch of K1. Why? Why would you want to go on this side? I like how they roll together. This is tight. Maybe I need a school of them. Oh, chasing. Oh, they're, they're chasing fish already, or chasing shrimp. They're probably gonna eat all the shrimp. I don't really care though, because um, I need them. Oh, let's see if they cross. Looking good. I need them to kill all the snails, bro. Really. I have a lot of shrimp in here. I just realized that. I heard Grommies uh, eat snails too, and I was gonna add a Grommy in here, but realistically, these two are these two should do a lot of damage. But yeah, man, these two are probably the luckiest chain loaches ever because they have this whole thing to themselves, literally. And their sole job is to get rid of all these snails that's on this wall. Literally, bro. Let's go ahead and let them settle in, and uh, I'll catch up with them later. All right, guys, so we're back at the garage. Let's go ahead and check up on these chain loaches. I see them right now. They look like they're doing pretty good. Let me go and give you a little snip of what I'm looking at. They're swimming. Oh, they're swimming. Look at that. From what I'm looking at right now, it looks like they're uh, kind of adventuring. That. look at them going at it pretty active very active and uh, what's good about this site right here is um, they're not in the K1 which is good I wanted them to stay on this side and just because of how active they are I actually want to get more and put it into the sump hmm. let's see if they did any damage with the snails oh I see some snail shells right there focus some snail shells right there the wall has no snails which is which is actually pretty good big snails there so that's cool um but yeah i don't see any snails surprisingly well i do see some snails on this side though like uh here and uh oh yeah there's a lot on this side right there but on this side there's no snails which is pretty good huh i'm actually pretty surprised i wasn't expecting results already but uh looks like these guys are already putting in work i wonder if they're looking for snails right now let me see if i can get you guys a, a little bit more of a clear image from this side but so you can see the, that those white things on the floor that's a snail shells you know i'm looking for snails right now on the glass and i can't find any on this side i see a lot on the other side but besides my near right which is right there hopefully they don't eat it i don't see any other snails I see you know shrimp here and these guys are really active i thought i was just gonna put them in here and i wasn't gonna be able to see them anymore but um the good thing about these loaches is they're they're so active like look at them they're not hiding at all. I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, they're very, very active. Uh, I always thought loaches like to hide and all that stuff, but these two are just dancing away. These two really worked. And the good thing about it is they look really good doing it too. They were kind of pricey. They're about $20 a piece. So if you wanted a school of them, you needed like at least five or six. That's gonna be about $120. So if you're looking for more of like a budget type of fish to kind of control your population, these two might not be it. I tried assassin snails, but they just disappeared for some reason. I don't know where they are. Um, these are the ones that I bought off Amazon. I'm going to link the video right here somewhere. Clown loaches, loaches in general, chain loaches, dwarf chain loaches, they work and they do have the good reputation of destroying and eradicating snails. Good. All right, guys, so I'm here to give you guys an update on my experience with the dwarf chain loaches. Uh, from what I'm seeing right now, they're doing pretty good. The only issue is they might run out of snails to eat, and that's going to be a problem. So I'm pretty excited to use these loaches for the snail control. 
Uh, some of you guys have mentioned that before in the past, but when it came down to loaches, I only thought about like clown loaches and they get pretty big. I didn't really think about like the smaller loaches like these ones right here. So I'm really glad that these came along. I'm really glad that you guys uh, suggested this and um, yeah, it worked out good for me. You know, the day that we ordered those assassin snails on Amazon, I thought that was going to be like the one and done solution for my snail pest problem, but I put them in the sump and I've never seen them since. Like they just disappeared completely. I haven't seen one. I put like four or five in there. Maybe it's more, I don't know, but I put them in the tank and then they all just, they're just gone. And then on top of that, I know they're not doing their job because there's a whole bunch of pest snails everywhere. All three of my neorite snails that were in that tank, they're all still here. Yeah, I just don't know where the shells went. Either they all climbed out for some reason, but um, yeah, they just all disappeared. This is the reason why I went ahead and got the dwarf chain loaches. And hopefully with the addition of these two fish, they can take care of the thousands and thousands of snails that I have in this system. So if you have yourself a snail problem, then you can't take care of it manually and like they're all up in your plants and all that stuff. You don't want to destroy your hardscape and all that. Look into these little dwarf chain loaches. The biggest they get is about two inches. Their temperature range is like super wide and stuff. You go like 70 something to the hot upper 80s. It's really good. And the thing is they look good doing it too. They're not like ugly looking and all that stuff. These loaches actually look really nice. And on top of that, whenever it comes down to like loaches and cleanup crew, you would assume like, you know, a loach will hide out and never come out. Just, just like the plecos and stuff. Even though about 80% of this tank is vegetation, usually the, you know, the top has a whole, whole bunch of like plants. The bottom is filled with moss. There's java fern in there. There's a new, whatever. There's hell plants in there and they don't hide. They are always swimming and stuff. They're always out and about and uh, they make themselves known. So that's what I like about that fish. They look good. They're not always hiding and they, they do their job. I'm glad I can take on these two fish and I hope I can provide them a good life in my sump and uh, hopefully they'll have a abundance of snails to eat in the future. So that's it for today's video. I just wanna give you guys my first hand impression when it came down to using dwarf chain loaches for like snail population control. So if you guys have any snail problems, I highly, highly, highly recommend you guys try these little loaches out. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next one and peace guys.